What's the scariest story you heard a child tell about their imaginary friend? My oldest when she was 4. She had an imaginary friend named Jack who lived under our back porch, and he liked to shove sticks down people's throats. I discouraged playtime with Jack. A plus parenting decision there. My cousin had an imaginary friend who she said used to live in the fireplace and was red and patchy, as if she was burnt. Apparently she was a little girl who wore funny clothes that looked like olden day clothes. Still spooks me out. Dang. Still better than a purple mommy, though. When my daughter was a toddler she randomly started talking about a man named Don. She always described him the same way and didn't seem scared at all, despite bringing him up every day. She didn't go to daycare and we didn't know anyone named Don. Then one day she got completely freaked out, wouldn't walk around the house alone in case she ran into Don, wouldn't sleep in her own room, and would talk about how she hated him because he said mean words to her all the time. About a year into mean Don we bought a new house. Once we moved she never spoke of him again. My son stopped talking to his imaginary friend for months after my nephew, who was 15, took his own life. My son, who was not quite 5, was the apple of his eye. My nephew treated my son like a little brother, and since his mom watched my son while I worked, they spent tons of time together. I had simply told my son his cousin was sick from sadness and he'd died. I would remind him every time before we went to their house so he wouldn't pester my sister about where he was. One day he said mom, you keep saying he's not here anymore, but he is. He sits on my bed before I go to sleep and talks to me. He would not be dissuaded. This went on for months. He knew things we did not speak about around him that happened. My nephew's grandpa on his dad's side passed a few months later. That's when my son told me his cousin told him he wouldn't be able to visit anymore. He was going on a train with his grandpa, and they couldn't come back again. Last thing he told him was to never play with guns. They weren't safe. My nephew took his life with a handgun. Wigged me the heck out. This was actually quite heartwarming. I totally did not tear up. My son had this imaginary friend, Ganga. She lived in the nearby pond, had duck feet, hair all over her face, ate through a slit in her neck and we were expecting her any minute for dinner. He was totally chill with this horrific monster idea, yet he had recurring nightmares about a puppy coming into his room. Kids are weird. My youngest niece had an imaginary friend and when my sister told me about it she said ask her what she looks like. Okay, what's she look like? Broken pieces. Comma oh, why is she broken sweetie? She fell from our tree. Nope. Sorry sis you're on your own. Reminds me of one thing I apparently said once. While driving by an abandoned house. Me. That man's sad. Dad. Why is he sad? Me. Because they put dirt on him. My cousin was a few years younger than me and he had an imaginary friend called Mookie. Mookie wasn't human. But some kind of alien monster thing. Used to freak me out when I'd hear a noise behind me at my grandparents house and my cousin would calmly say it's only Mookie. He just wants to see you. Haha. <laughs> Mookie is the name of a famous clown I see when on holiday at the circus so I can only see him and his sketches when reading this one. Nice breather from all the potential demons. So maybe not scary but definitely weird. When I was little I claimed to have an imaginary friend. Who had light brown hair and wore a nightgown. And she had stars for eyes. Well. My niece was living at my old childhood home and she told me that she has a friend who misses me and she asked why I went away. When I asked who. She described my old imaginary friend. It was super spooky. Bro. Me. His name was Ricky. He lived in the mirrors and wouldn't let me change. I vividly remember saying something along the lines of. Ricky. Please don't watch me while I'm changing. Ricky, go to a different mirror, I have to take a bath, like, what? Hey Ricky I am frickin naked here, that's what I imagine you saying in the most New Yorker accent possible. My son was too, he started to cry in the middle of the night and say an orange doggy was under his cot. This went on for at least a month, he would describe the orange doggy as having sharp teeth, stealing his dummies and biting his lips and face until there was blood. He's 16 now and still remembers it vividly. I'm talking to Miz. Lady. Who's Miz? Lady? The white lady with black eyes and long fingernails. Cue me searching for the nearest exorcist. And the long, long, long teeth. 
Purple Mommy. When my son was first learning to talk, he would tell us about something called Purple Mommy. It could be an imaginary friend, but these details are a little bit creepy. Here's a few of the Purple Mommy details. Purple Mommy is all purple with long hair and bright all white eyes. At the time he mixed up purple with black, so he could have meant she was all black. Purple Mommy picks him up at night and turns off the lights. We would often find my son out of his crib in the morning, which would mean him crawling over the railing into the ground, at a time when he was barely walking. Definitely found the lights in his room off a few times too. Even though he's terrified of the dark, Purple Mommy needs a bandage because she has blood everywhere. Dart Purple Mommy has no smile, meaning a mouth. Purple Mommy can take her head off. Purple Mommy really doesn't like daddy. He told us all of this stuff for maybe a year or a little more. If we ever asked where she was, head always points to the same spot, a corner of the room behind his open closet door. He would also wake up crying almost every night during this time. Once, during a really rough night, my wife went to ask him what's wrong, and his answer was purple mommy won't let me sleep. Nope, 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 goodbye thread. My youngest sister. Four at the time, had an imaginary friend named Paris Jerris. My dad had built her a small playhouse in our backyard where my mom could see and hear her while she was in the kitchen. My sister would have tea parties and such with her imaginary friend. One day mom heard her say don't worry, as long as I'm alive they won't hurt you. She paused and said well if you do that then I can't help you. It's not nice to kill people. When my mom asked her what that was about my sister said sometimes I have to tell Paris to be a nice person or he can't visit anymore. We moved not too long afterwards and she didn't get a new playhouse. Most of my extended family live around the same area so we have lots of gatherings. For the backstory, one of my uncles, let's call him Steve, lost a childhood friend when he was 7. Steve and his friend, let's call him Jack, were having a play date one afternoon and got a bit dirty in some mud. So Steve's mother gave Jack a pair of Steve's shoes to borrow. When Jack's father came to pick him up after the play date they forgot to put back on Jack's shoes and Jack accidentally got into the car with the borrowed shoes still on. Tragically the father and Jack got into a terrible car crash on the way home which killed 7 year old Jack. The family had him buried in the shoes he had borrowed from Steve. I'm not sure why. Fast forward 30 years to a family gathering in 2010. My 6 year old cousin Sarah is playing alone with toys in a quieter room of the house. My uncle Steve comes up to her and asks her what she is playing. Sarah responds saying that she is playing with a friend. Holding back a smile, Steve asks who her imaginary friend is. Sarah continues to play while saying that she is playing with his friend Jack, and that he is sorry he forgot to give your shoes back. My uncle's jaw nearly dropped. He had not talked about Jack in years, let alone tell that story to a 6 year old. No one had brought up Jack that day nor at any family gathering recently. Every time I remember this incident I get chills. This kinda sad NGL, probably the least scary story in this thread too. My when my cousin and I were kids she casually mentioned she had a friend named Harold who lived in the picture frames. Their entire hallways was lined with picture frames, and she would always hold her breath when she walked by them. Anyway one day we were hanging out in their unfinished basement and she pointed to a beam in the far back corner and stated very bluntly that that's where Harold sleeps. When my son was 3-4 he started talking about his wife. He would say she was outside, and very sad. I remember him putting his hand on his heart and saying he missed her, but we couldn't let her and she needed to move on. Heartbreaking. Really makes me wonder about reincarnation. My son has always talked about the green lights that come visit him. Four years old. The green lights came to me again last night. Us. Oh. Okay. Are they friendly? Four years old. They don't have mouths. Sometimes they go into your room. OMFG no. Bit late to the party but anyway. My mom used to tell me the story about my imaginary friend well to start off. My mom used to come check on me in the morning and things would have been placed into my cot that baby me would have had no way of reaching to put them in myself. Then as I got to maybe 5 years old I complained of someone knocking on my bedroom door each night. Then came the story of my imaginary friend, a little girl that I would play with. My mom asked me describe her and I said she wore a long dress, had blonde ringlet hair and her eyes were rolled back in her head. 
cue freaked out mom. She tried not to bring it up too much as she didn't want to encourage this friend to stick around. But a few months later we were sat in the front room when I started to cry. She asked me what was wrong and I told her that my friend was sat on her lap and that wasn't fair as I wanted to sit on her lap instead. She never forgave me for the mini heart attack that gave her ha. Eventually years go by and I have no recollection of said friend but my mom would tell the story every so often. Bonus story. Years later when my eldest was old enough to start talking she would frequently tell me about her other mom who would come to visit her in her dreams to make sure she was okay and to say she missed her. My daughter would tell me that sometimes she would want to go with her other mom to wherever she goes when she leaves. Frick that. You better tell her to avoid those button eyes. My eldest son was about to had an imaginary friend. BB was orange, the size of a large apple and covered in fur. BB was cool. Occasionally my son would yell at him to be nice but overall he was good. One day in the car my son yelled that's IT and put his window down, threw something out and calmly put his window back up. When we asked what happened he says very bluntly that he threw BB out the window and was now dead. We asked about BB in the weeks after and he always said BB was dead. Son is now 10 and still remembers BB. He says BB was a dong and deserved it but can't remember why. Boy got boundaries. So curious about what BB did. Context. My bedroom was in the attic. When my brother was 4 he told me about the man who lived in the attic. Apparently he would hear someone walking around in the attic when I wasn't in there. He said he'd seen someone's head poking out of the hatch watching him at night, and that he was sorry he'd been too scared to do anything about the man in my bedroom. If that wasn't bad enough one time I was hanging out in his room one day when he went quiet out of nowhere and when I asked what was wrong he said he's back and I swear to god I heard footsteps coming from the attic. I no longer live with them. I was talking to the same brother, now age 10, about him taking the bigger attic bedroom now it's empty. My youngest brother, 5, immediately answered, but where will the man live? STAHP oh my god. My boss has a stepdaughter who likes to talk about her brother all the time and how he's a bad boy who likes to play with fire. She's an only child. Demon alert. My son had an imaginary friend he called Dark he was only 3 at the time. He would say hear it, see it we would ask him what he was talking about and he would say dark. There was only one room in our house he would say this in and it was in our basement. He said dark didn't like when my son would tell us about him. We got the house blessed after my son told us dark had a dog and the dog's name was keeper after the blessing he never talked about dark or keeper again. I don't know if this would be considered a imaginary friend, but this happened around I was 4, 5. Six don't exactly remember. It was a couple months after my grandfather died because of lung cancer. He used to smoke, and we were living at my grandmother's at the time. One day I was on the couch and my grandmother was talking about her wedding with my grandfather. I ended up saying I was at your wedding. They explained to me I wasn't and my grandmother asked me questions about it and I answered everyone correct about the marriage. I think this was a week before or after, but on that day I was talking to myself. I usually talk a lot to myself and I still do, and my mom walked in and asked who I was talking to. My mother told me I responded with him talking to Pap Pap. A couple months passed after these events, and they start re-asking me and told me if I remember talking to my grandfather, I forgot everything. When I was 8, I remember getting ready to school and my grandma was still asleep. This is forever in my mind. I see a white figure the same shape he is and I saw him walk into the bathroom. That was the last time I saw or talked to him. Comma that last one though. When my older brother was about 3-4, late 70s, he told my mom very matter of factly that there was a ghost behind the TV at my grandma's house, old style floor TV, and that he was friendly like Casper, but it wasn't Casper. There have been lots of weird things heard seen at that house over the years. My youngest son also used to sound like he was saying real word sentences when he was just barely old enough to even babble, witnessed by multiple people. And when he got a little older and could actually talk he would casually and randomly mention the man in my closet. He never seemed scared of him so I was just like okay cool. So I lived in a very old house in a neighborhood that was predominantly Hispanic with my little sisters and according to my mom, we each had an imaginary friend called the little brown boy. I was the first one to see him. 
then my sister, then my other sister, and we all had forgotten about him by the time the next sister saw him. He would apparently be super nice to us at first and we would play with him. And then out of nowhere we would be absolutely terrified of him and not want to go to our room, where he lived. We were all about 4 years old when we saw him. We moved out a few years later but the people who moved in next apparently have said their little daughter has an imaginary friend she called the mean boy. My eldest told me that his imaginary friend misses me and wishes he could have been with me longer than a month. I lost his big sister to SIDS a month after she was born the year before I had him. Not my story. I read it in a mumsnut thread about creepy imaginary friends. M there had a 6 stroke 7 year old lad if I recall correctly who had this imaginary friend who started out quite normal but then began telling the boy he didn't like his mum and dad. The son freely told the mum this. And then was whispering ideas to him about hurting or upsetting his mum and the pets. Comma the mum's knitter decided to not make a big deal out of it but tried to discourage chat about the IF. She could always tell if her son thought the imaginary friend was there as he had a certain uncomfortable look at times. Meal times when they were all together wrecked. Sometimes she would ask and son would say he's in the hall and won't come in cause you're here. He's told me to try and bite you. Comma the OP would feel watched from the hall. Feel an atmosphere act. Comma one beck nouns to her son upon the advice of a friend she tried sprinkling salt across doorways. Herb cleansing and saying prayers act. And the whole atmosphere in the house lightened. A couple of days later while her son was playing happily in the living room she couldn't stand the suspense anymore and asked his imaginary friend name. Not here. Comma son said no. And I'm a bit glad. OP. Trying to keep it light said well that's good then. Son said. And this is the bit that gave me the right heebie jeebies when I first read it. But he's just out there. Points to the front of the house. And he's watching us through the window. Fucking nope. My mum told me that when I was younger, maybe 3-4, I was looking out the window into the front yard laughing. When she asked me what I was laughing at, I flat out said to her the people dancing outside with no faces. Mum said she just kept looking ahead at the TV and acted as if she had never asked. New dope. Okay, so this is kinda creepy. I'm an adult that says I don't believe in ghosts and such. But then I think of this experience and wonder WTF is wrong with me being so stupid. I'd hardly call it a friend but when I was younger, like 12, I lived with my brother and his family. We moved to a house and one of my nieces, who was about 4, maybe 5, would avoid certain corners of the house. She was scared of the green lady. Pretty much always the same corner in the family room, but on a couple occasions she'd move. So her big sister about 9 at a time, would pick on her, throw her toys in that corner. My little niece would avoid it like the plague. Then one day, her big sister pushed her in that corner. I swear, never in my life had I ever heard such a blood-curdling scream. Never again have I yet and I hope to never hear that kind of scream again. She didn't even run away from the corner. She was backed into it, looking upwards. The fear had us scared, I think. My niece never messed with her little sister about that corner again, and none of us really fricked with that corner. Friends thought we were joking when they'd come over and we'd casually say, oh and stay away from that corner cause we're pretty sure an evil ghost lives there. So, when did the green lady move? Here's the fricked up part. According to my niece, my brother and his wife were discussing moving out of the house. The green lady did not like that and at bedtime, she followed them into their room. The other time, my sil got pregnant and the green lady got mad again. She moved to the nursery and would stay in there. During this time we lived there, about two and a half years. My sil was having twins but lost one. The surviving twin was born with spinal meningitis and all kinds of crap wrong. It was at least a month before he got to come home. Then my sil developed cervical cancer. Her mom who uses a walker falls in the frickin pool and injured herself. And we couldn't keep pets alive anymore. We had a golden retriever, a cocker spaniel, a cat, a couple pet rats and a guinea pig. The dogs got sick with pancreatic cancer and tumors growing on their sides. Our cat got ran over. The guinea got sick and the rats were fine until Sil's mom forgot to take the towel cover off the cage on a hot day and it cooked my niece's rat. We finally moved the frick out. But we all agree even after all this time that something was wrong with that place and that whatever that green bee was. 
She was frickin evil and was probably what made so many horrible things go wrong while we lived there. Purple mommy ain't got crap on green lady emo. I wouldn't call it an imaginary friend, but growing up, ages 6-10, I used to think the two grumpy old men from the Muppets, Statler and Waldorf, lived in mirrors. It got to the point where I was deathly afraid of mirrors and would turn them around so I wouldn't see the reflection. I know I creeped my mother out when I told her I did it so the men in the mirror can't watch me. I'm almost 20 and I have obviously grown out of that, but it's still a habit to turn mirrors so I can't see the reflection. I don't even realize I'm doing it sometimes. This one made me laugh. Thank you for being a beacon of light in a very dark thread. My son once told me, Gary said not to touch the stove, it's hot. Gary is my father's name, and he's been dead for 21 years. My son is 10. When I was 6 I had a friend who was a little younger than me and her imaginary friend was not a very nice person. She used to tell me how her imaginary friend, Mr. G made her hurt between her legs and how he tasted funny and made funny noises. She was absolutely terrified of him. She told me Mr. G was very, very tall, with no hair, and very mean eyes. After a few sleepovers my mom wouldn't let me have sleepovers at her house anymore and then she and her mom moved away. Her father didn't go with them. He was a very tall man with no hair and mean eyes. That's so sad. I've mentioned this before. But my sister Ashley used to get visited at night by a dead girl with long dark hair and spider hands. Yes, this predated the ring. Yes, I'm old AF. She moved out the second she turned 18. Never looked back. 20 odd years later, our half brother Trevor moved into her old room. It wasn't long after Trev started sleeping on the sofa, or with the lights on, and told us about his new friend that he didn't like. She was a dead girl who had long dark hair, an old nightgown and spider hands. Needless to say, none of us offered to trade rooms with him. Not an imaginary friend per se, but my niece as a toddler made a pretty convincing case that she was reincarnated. From the time she could lisp her first words, she carried on about someone called Tertha or Trutha or something odd like that. Sometimes she called herself Tertha and a fair number of her dolls had those or similar names. By the time she was two or three, she talked non-stop about her other mommy and her sister and how she, Tertha, and her other mommy and sister were in a car accident and then were in the hospital and her other mommy died. I mean, she wouldn't quit about it. My sister neither discouraged her from telling the stories nor encouraged her. She would always finish up with the punchline then after my other mommy died. Then I was in your stomach imagine a little child, big eyes looking up at you, rattling on about this. She pretty much stopped by the time she was 6, and by 8 didn't remember this at all. We figured she had forgotten her reincarnation. Jeez my son is doing something similar telling me about his other family. They had a red home and he had a mom, dad and baby sister. He tells me what their home looked like, and that a gang called the Cutters came and sliced his family up and they all died. He said he went and killed all the Cutters then he had to jump to this earth and now he's with me. He even says he misses them. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.